Creating user accounts using automation. The task of creating or modifying a large number of users or groups in the old days of NT was pretty cumbersome. In Windows 2003, this has been made considerably easier by a couple of very useful tools. The first command we're going to look at is ldiffde. This command enables you to import a text file containing user accounts or export your user accounts to a text file. Then we have csvde. Now this is pretty similar to ldiffde, but this enables you to use a CSV file like a spreadsheet instead of a text file to manipulate your accounts. CSVDE is a little less flexible than LDFDE, but it saves a bit of typing, so personally, I prefer to use CSVDE. Then we have the good old net user command. Now you probably won't use this much anymore. As compared with the other two commands, this one's a little simplistic, but it's still good to pump out a few basic accounts really quickly, so we'll touch on this command as well. And finally, we have some Active Directory commands, the DS commands, and there's a few of those, and we'll get stuck into them before the end of this video. Okay, we'll start by taking a look at LDIFFDE. So to start using LDIFFDE, we'll go to a command prompt and type in LDIFFDE. Now as with most Windows commands, if we add a slash question mark to the end and hit enter, we can see the syntax of the command and the available parameters that we can use. Now although the two most common switches you're going to use are the import and export switches, we do have quite an array of options with this command. For example, if we scroll up, we can use the minus P switch to export only a particular OU. We can use the minus S switch to specify a different server than the one we're currently on. And we can use the minus D switch to specify a different domain. Okay, so we'll go back down and we'll type in LDIF DE and we'll add in the minus F switch to export to a file the user accounts that we have in our domain. Now we'll need to add a file name, so we'll just call ours users.ldf, and the ldf is just simply the file extension for the ldiffde command. So we'll hit enter, and we can see the command run on our local server, server01, and exported our users to a file users.ldf that we specified in the command line, and we can see 173 entries were exported and everything worked fine. Okay, so we'll go to Windows Explorer, and then we'll just open up the file that we just created. So we'll right click, we'll select open, and we'll open this up with Notepad. Okay, I'll just expand this. Now if we scroll down to the bottom of this file, we're going to look for Bob Jones's account that we created earlier in our video on user accounts. Now I know it's going to be near the end of this file as it's the most recent account we've created. And we can see here that it is at the bottom. Okay, the first line that we can see here is the distinguished name. Now we can see the common name of Bob Jones. His account lives in our users OU in the domain component test domain and domain component com. Now do note here that DC doesn't mean domain controller, it means domain component. Now it's important to understand that some of the things that you see in this list are able to be imported and some aren't. Now if we look down this list, we can see certain things like the common name of Bob Jones, the surname of Jones, and the given name of Bob. Now if we had have supplied an initial for Bob's middle name, we'd also see an initials here as well. Now we can also see when Bob's account was created, when it was last changed, and of course we can see his display name, and down the bottom here we can see his user principal name. Now these things here I've just highlighted are able to be imported later on. Now things that cannot be imported are things like the object SID, or the object security identifier, and the object GUID, or the object globally unique identifier, as these things are both unique. Now another point to mention about this file, even though you see these keywords over here on the left are using capitalization, these words are not case sensitive. So if you start writing your own, you can do it all in lowercase if you like. Okay, so now I want to move on to using LDIFFDE to create some user accounts. So to do this, I'm going to open up a new file that I've created on the root of my C drive called autouser.ldf. So the first thing we need to supply is a distinguished name. Then we'll need a common name, and in this case I've just called this one Homer. Then we'll need to add in an OU, and as you can see we've called that one Simpsons. Now I have gone ahead and created the Simpsons OU ahead of time just to separate these accounts from our default users OU. 
Then we've also supplied our domain component of test domain and our domain component of com. Now remember that DC doesn't mean domain controller, it does mean domain component. Now because I'm creating a user account here, I do need to specify the object class of user. And lastly, the final mandatory thing we need to make this work is a SAM account name. And of course, we've provided the name of Homer. Now our SAM account name is the pre-Windows 2000 logon name, whereas Homer at testdomain.com would be the user principal name. Now by default, a UPN will not be created for Homer's account as we haven't specified one, but Homer here will still be able to log on using Homer at testdomain.com as a UPN even though it won't actually exist in his user account properties. Now the last thing I want to point out is in the last entry we've created, we've added an additional two lines. We've added in the user principal name of Maggie at testdomain.com and the user account control of 512. Now the user principal name does what it implies and it creates the UPN. Now as we said earlier, Maggie would be able to log on using the UPN even though we haven't created it with these other accounts but this here is just to show you the correct syntax. Now by default, all of these accounts that we've created will be created, but they'll be disabled. Now to enable them, we need to add in the user account control line. Now a lot of information that I've read about this subject states that you need to add the user account control parameter with the number of 512 at the end to enable the account. Now to disable an account, you could change this value of 512 to 514, or you can leave it out altogether as the default is to create the account disabled anyway. Now this is all only partially true. Now by default, our file as it stands won't work and we're going to get an error. But we'll run it anyway and you'll see what I mean. So we'll go back to our command prompt and we need to type in ldifde with the dash i switch to import a file and then we need to specify a file with the dash f switch followed by the name of our file which of course is autouser.ldf. Okay, so we'll hit enter. And now as you can see, on line 17, our file caused an error. So let's go and switch over to Active Directory Users and Computers and we'll change into our Simpsons OU and we'll hit refresh. And here we can see four of the five accounts that we wanted to create. So we can see that Bart, Homer, Lisa and Marge were all created and as we predicted they are disabled as shown by the red X. Now the problem here with Maggie's account is that the new user account doesn't comply with our default domain security policy that requires a minimum of seven characters in our password. So when we imported that file it produced the error we saw on line 17. So what I'm going to do now is highlight all of these accounts. I'll right click and select to delete these accounts. And now we'll go back to our autouser.ldf file and we'll change this value of 512 to 544. Now we'll just save this file here and we'll go back to our command prompt and we'll rerun the command. Okay, this time you can see that our five accounts were modified successfully. So let's go and have a look at trying to understand why this occurred. Okay, so here's a brief summary of the options that we have with the user account control field. Now you'll note that we have a lot of options down the left hand side and hexadecimal and decimal values down the right. Now if we look over here on the right, we can see the value of 512, which means a normal account. So when we tried to create Maggie's account, we attempted to create a normal account, which was blocked by our default domain policy. Now you'll probably note that there is no 544 as we used in our second example. So to arrive at 544, we can simply add these options together. So what we did here is to create a normal account which has a value of 512, and then we added the password not required value of 32. Now this comes to a total of 544. So for Maggie's account, we effectively said, create a normal user account, but don't ask for a password. Now if you think back to our earlier video on user accounts, you will recall that setting local user properties will override the default domain security policy, and that in effect is what we've done here. Okay, so let's go back to our Active Directory Users and Computers MMC, and we'll hit refresh, and now we can see we do have five accounts created, but Maggie's account is the only one that's enabled. 
So remember, if you plan on using automation to create a great number of accounts that you want to be enabled immediately, you'll need to set the appropriate options in the user account control field of the imported LDF file. Now I'm just going to select all these accounts, I'll choose delete, and now we'll move on and take a look at CSV DE. So the first thing I'd like to do is go and open up a CSV file that we created earlier and show you the difference between the text file we used in LDIF DE and the CSV file we're going to use here in CSV DE. Now before I get started on what's in this file, you should take note that the file has been saved as a CSV file or a comma separated value file, so make sure that when you create one of these, you do a save as and save the file as a CSV file. Okay, so I'll open up the file. Now as we can see here across the top row, we've got a few columns. We have a distinguished name, an object class, our SAM account name, our user account control, and of course our user principal name. Now I really like using CSVDE because as I mentioned at the start of this video, using CSVDE we can also use Excel and it will save us a lot of typing. So for example if the Simpsons family suddenly found themselves much much larger, we could simply use the Excel autofill tool to drag and copy down a whole bunch of these cells and most of the typing's done for us. Now we'd still have to enter in our name of our user in our SAM account name and user principal name and so on, but this feature of Excel has saved us some considerable typing. Now you may note that under Bart's account I haven't included a SAM account name. And no, I haven't forgotten about it, I just want to show you what happens when we run the CSVDE utility with the SAM account name missing. Okay, so we'll go back to our command prompt and this time we'll type in CSVDE and then we'll use the dash I switch to import a file, then we'll supply the dash F switch for the file name, and then we'll have to supply our file name which is users.csv. Now as a side note, with this command you can use the dash K switch to ignore any errors you might get, and this could be a good idea if you happen to be merging a lot of accounts into your Active Directory. Alright, so we've entered in our command, so we'll hit enter and we'll see what happens. Alright, we can see our three entries were modified successfully, so we'll go back to Active Directory Users and Computers, and we'll refresh our Simpsons OU. Ok, and we can see our three accounts have been created, and all of them are enabled because we added the value of 544 in the User Account Name Property column. Ok, so let's go and take a look at Homer's account. We'll right click and we'll choose Properties. Then we'll go to the Account tab. Ok, we can see that Homer does have a user principal name, as well as his pre-Windows 2000 SAM account name. Now you will notice down here that Homer must change his password at the next logon. Ok, so we'll click Cancel, and we'll right click on Bart, and we'll also select Properties, and go to his Account tab. Now if you recall, with Bart's account, we deliberately left out his SAM account name, which is supposedly a mandatory field. Now we can see Bart's UPN, but down here, under Bart's user logon name or his pre-Windows 2000 SAM account name, what happens when you don't fill in this information is Windows 2003 will generate a random 18 character pre-Windows 2000 name for this account. So right here is a good incentive to fill that information in properly, because if you want your users to be able to log on using their pre-Windows 2000 name, they're going to have to remember this 18 character name or you, the administrator, is going to have to go back into all of these accounts and enter that information incorrectly. So there's a little gotcha to think about when you're creating your CSV file. Ok, so we've looked at the CSVDE command. I think it's much better to use CSVDE since you're able to save so much time typing. But basically CSVDE and LDIFDE do pretty much the same thing. So take a look at both and select your own weapon of choice. Ok, next we'll go and look at the net user command. So we'll go back to our command prompt. Now even though we have all of these fantastic new user commands at our disposal, there's certainly nothing wrong with going back to using the old net user command. But you are rather limited in what you can do with it. In fact, with net user you can only add a new user account, and you can't assign many options at all. So this is simply a quick and dirty way of creating a new user in the users OU. Now given all the new options that you have with the other commands, it's unlikely that you're going to use the net command, but the option is always there. 
Now if you do want to check out what options are available with the net commands, you can simply go to your start menu, click on help and support, and then select tools, and on the left we can select the command line reference A to Z, and then simply choose the letter that your uh, command starts with. So in this instance we'd hit N, come down and select net services commands, and here you can see all the commands that you have available. So we just simply click on net user and then you can see all of the syntax here for that command. Okay, so to use our net user command, we'd simply go to our command prompt and type in net user with the slash add switch, and then we'd type in the name of the user we wish to add. So we'll add a new user named Vinny, and then we'll supply a password and we'll supply a password of password here with an uppercase and a special character so it meets our Windows 2003 domain complexity requirements and we'll hit enter. And then we can see the command completed successfully. So we'll go to our users OU and we'll just hit refresh and there we can see is Vinny's account. Now I'm just going to actually go and delete Vinny's account because I want to go back to our command prompt and show you something else. Now this time I'm going to change Vinny's password to include a different special character the pipe symbol on the end of his password. So what I'm going to do is type in net user with the add switch followed by the username of Vinny and then I'm going to enter in a password of password with the pipe symbol on the end. So I'll hit enter. Now you can see we just got a message telling us that the syntax of our command is incorrect but it actually technically is correct. The problem is is that Windows cannot correctly interpret our pipe symbol on the end. So what we'll do is we'll reissue that command, but we'll enclose his password in quotes. And now we can see our command completed successfully. So we'll go back and we'll refresh our users OU, and there's Vinny's user account. Now Windows is also going to have trouble with the greater than and less than, the caret, the ampersand, and the pipe symbol. So if you are going to use any of those, be sure to add the quotation marks like we demonstrated here to avoid any errors. Now as standard with Windows commands, we can type in net user and use the slash question mark to see the full list of options we have with the net user command. Now lastly, before we finish up with our net user command, you can use the net user command within a batch file to create more than one account. So here I've created a netuser.bat batch file and I'm just going to right click and select edit and you can see that I've just created a simple few commands of netuser slash add with XP user 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 as well as a password. Now I've added in a pause statement at the end which produces a press any key to continue type message and that just enables us to review the output to see if there's any errors in our script. So what I'll do is I'll double click on that and we can see that all of our accounts have been created successfully and we're prompted to press any key to continue. So it just makes it easy so we can go back and review this. Now alternatively, you could actually pipe this out to a text file if you wish as well. So if we go back to Active Directory Users and Computers and then refresh our OU, you can see our five accounts here have been created. Now a couple of things I want to touch on before we wrap up this discussion of the net user command is that you have no control over where the accounts are created. Now all of the accounts will by default be created in our users OU. So if you want these user accounts to go into a different OU, you'll have to right click on each object and then move them in or simply drag and drop them into a different OU. Now the next thing I wanted to point out, when we use CSVDE and LDIFDE and we didn't provide a user account control parameter, those accounts were created but they were disabled. Now with the net user command, all of your accounts by default are enabled. Now the final thing I want to point out when we create an account with the net user command, the new account doesn't have a user principal name. So we'll right click on one of the accounts and we'll select properties and come up here to the account tab. And here you can see that there is no user principal name. Yet you will find that this account can still log on using their UPN of XPUser1 at testdomain.com. Now of course you can fill in this information if you want but that's entirely optional as the account will work with either a UPN or the pre-Windows 2000 name. Okay so that's the net user command. Now let's move on and we'll take a look at the Active Directory command line tools. Okay, there's six directory service commands. Now the first one, dsadd, simply adds objects to Active Directory. 
dsmod is used to modify objects in Active Directory. dsget displays information about the objects you have stored in Active Directory. dsquery is used to query Active Directory objects that match a certain criteria. dsmove obviously moves objects from one container to another. And lastly we have dsrm and that's used to remove objects or a complete subtree of objects from Active Directory. So the first command we're going to take a look at is dsadd. So open up a command prompt and then type in dsadd with a slash question mark and that'll give us a look at the help page. Now we can see here that we've got quite a lot of options with the dsadd command. Now we can not only add users, but we can also use this command to add computers, contacts, groups, OUs and quota information. Now we can also use the inbuilt help to bring up help for sub items like users for example. So here we'd simply type dsadd user slash question mark. Okay so in this example we want to use dsadd to add a user account but before we do this let's start from scratch and add a new OU first and then we'll create a group inside that OU and then place this new user account as a member of that group. So in our command prompt we'll type in dsadd OU and then we'll call this new OU Oh, I don't know, how about something like uh, Microsoft? Okay, next we'll need to add in our domain component of test domain and then our domain component of com. And then we'll hit enter. Okay, you can see our DS add succeeded. So we'll go back to our Active Directory users and computers and we'll hit refresh. And there you can see our Microsoft OU's been created. Okay, so we'll go back to our command prompt and this time we'll create our new group. So again we'll type in dsadd and we'll follow it by the word group. And of course we need to give our new group a name so we'll call this group bosses. So we'll give it a common name of bosses. And then of course we want to place it inside our Microsoft OU. So we'll enter OU equals Microsoft. And then followed by our domain component of test domain. And of course our domain component of com and we'll hit enter. And again, we can see our ds add command succeeded. Now what this command has done is just created a default global security group inside our Microsoft OU. Okay, now we need to create a user account. So again, we'll enter in ds add followed by user. And we'll give this one the common name of Steve inside the Microsoft OU and followed by the domain component of test domain and domain component of com. And we'll hit enter. In fact, we'll go and create one more user and this time we're going to add a few extra options to his account. So we'll enter in dsadd followed by user followed by common name equals and this time we'll add in Mr. Bill himself. So we'll type in Bill. Again, we'll supply the OU of Microsoft, the domain component of test domain and domain component of com. Now, but this time we're going to add the hyphen PWD switch and then provide a password for Bill's account. And we're also going to make Bill a member of our boss's group. So we'll enter a hyphen with member of and now we'll supply the path to the boss's group. And that's in the Microsoft OU followed by the domain component of test domain followed by the domain component of com and we'll hit enter. And again, we can see that our DS ad succeeded. Okay, so now we'll go back to Active Directory users and computers and we'll refresh our Microsoft OU. And inside here, we can see we have two user accounts and of course the boss's security group. Now you'll probably straight away notice that Steve's account is disabled and that's because we didn't supply a password and we can see that Bill's account is enabled. So let's go and take a look at the properties of Bill's account. So we'll right click and we'll select property and, and there's two things that I want to show you. So we'll go to Bill's account properties and the first thing here to notice is that Bill doesn't have to change his password when he first logs on and this is the default setting. Now some of the other commands that we looked at, this box is checked by default, but with DS add, the box isn't checked when we supply a password with the command. So that's something to look out for. Now by the way, if you do happen to want Bill to be able to change his password when he first logs on, you can use the DS add command and then just add the must change password 
with a yes after it, and that will force Bill to have to change his password when he first logs on. Now the second thing I wanted to show you about Bill's account, that he is indeed a member of the boss's group. Okay, now let's go back to our command prompt, and we'll go and take a look at the syntax of our DS add user command again, because there's a couple of things here that I want to point out. So we'll scroll up here and take a look at this help, and we can see two switches here, one for creating a home directory and the other for creating a profile path. Now this home directory and profile path switches don't work. Now the online help will tell you to use a UNC path. So let's just scroll back down, and here we can see that the home directory switch is telling you that you need to enter in a slash users slash dollar sign username dollar sign followed by the name of the home directory. Now what happens here using this switch is that it actually interprets the command as a literal and every user that you create using these switches will have a path which reads dollar username dollar and not Bill or Steve or Bob as we might expect. Now there's really two solutions here. The first is whether you've left the home directory or profile path parameters in or out of your command, the first solution is to go into each account and update this manually. Now the second solution is to use the dsmod command to modify each account once it's been created. Strangely, the dsmod command works for this, but dsadd doesn't. So to illustrate what I mean, I'm going to go and create a new account, which I'll call manager1. Now we'll place it in the same Microsoft OU, but this time I'm going to add a home directory. So here we've entered in dsadd user with the common name of manager1 and we've placed this in the Microsoft OU of testdomain.com. Now we've also left the default here that we had before of password and here we've entered in the home de switch with the UNC path to our home directory which is server01 this server slash home slash dollar username dollar which is what Microsoft have provided in the online help. So we'll hit enter and we can see that our DS add command succeeded so we'll go back to our Microsoft OU and we'll refresh the screen and we can see that our manager one user account has been created so we'll right click on that account and we'll choose properties. Now if we go to the profile tab you can see that the local path to our user's home folder has been explicitly set to server01 slash home slash dollar username dollar. Now this simply means that if we use this to create a whole bunch of accounts, every user is going to have exactly the same folder path, which of course won't work. So what we'll do is we'll cancel this, we'll go back to our command prompt, and then we'll fire up our next command which is dsmod. Now the syntax for dsmod is the same as dsadd. Okay, so we've typed in dsmod, user again because we want to modify a user account, the common name of manager1 because we need to modify manager1's account, and of course the OU of Microsoft, the domain component of test domain and com, and then we've specified the home directory switch with the path to server01 slash home slash dollar username dollar. So we'll hit enter, and we can see our dsmod succeeded. So we'll go back to Active Directory Users and Computers, we'll right click on Manager 1 and select Properties, and then we'll come back to the Profile tab, and now we can see that the local path has been set to Server01 slash Home slash Manager 1, which is exactly what we wanted it to do in the first place. Now by the way, modifying this user account didn't overwrite any of the other fields that we set. So to prove this, we can simply jump over to our Member Of tab, and we can still see that Manager1 is a member of the boss's group. Anyway, so be aware of this big gotcha with the dsadd command, and remember that to overcome this problem, you're going to need to use dsmod to modify the properties of the account. Okay, the next command in our ds series that we want to look at is the dsget command. Now this command is kind of useful as it enables you to retrieve the properties of a particular object in Active Directory. So for example to find out what home directory the manager1 user account has set, we could simply type in dsget user common name of manager1 in the OU of Microsoft with the domain component of test domain and the domain component of com and then we'll enter in the minus hmdir switch and we'll hit enter and we can see that the response given us back was server01 slash home slash manager1. 
Now the options for our DS get command are the same that we saw in the DS add commands. So again, use the online help to see what sort of properties that you can search for. Now our next DS command is DS query. Now this one here is really great as it enables you to search for a list of objects that match a certain criteria and then using the pipe symbol you can push the output of this command as the input of a DS mod command. So let's look at an example first. We'll use the DS query command to tell us which users are contained in the Microsoft OU. So we'll enter DS query with the user switch followed by our OU of Microsoft, and then our domain component of test domain, domain component of com. And we'll hit enter. And you can see the response is that Steve, Bill, and Manager1 are all members of our Microsoft OU. Okay, now we already know that Bill and Manager1 are members of our boss's group. Now let's say we want Bill and Manager1 to be part of a new group. And let's say we'll just call this group sales. So what we'll do is we'll quickly go and create a new group using the dsadd group command. So we'll just enter in DS add group, followed by a common name of sales, followed by the OU of Microsoft, our domain component of test domain, our domain component of com, and we'll hit enter. And we can see that our DS add succeeded. So if we go back over here and refresh, we can see we now have our sales security global group. Okay, so let's go back to our command prompt, and now we'll use the same DS query command to tell us what users we have in the Microsoft OU, and then we're going to use the pipe symbol to pipe the output of this command into another one. So we're going to use our DS query, followed by the user, followed by the OU, the domain component of test domain, domain component of com, and then we're going to use the pipe symbol to pipe the output of this command into a DS mod command. So our DS mod command will be DS mod group, the common name of sales, the OU of Microsoft, with the domain component of test domain, domain component of com, and then we've added the add member switch. So basically the output of this command will query all the users that we have in our Microsoft OU. Now once it's found all those users, it's going to modify the group of sales and add all the members that we found in our DS query user. So we'll hit enter, and we can see our DS mod succeeded. So we'll go back over here to our Active Directory Users and Computers. And now if we go and right click on Bill's account and select Properties, and then we'll come up to the Member Of tab, we can see that Bill is now a member of the Sales Group as well. In fact, if we go to our Sales Group and we'll right click and select Properties, we'll go to the Members tab and we can see that Bill, Manager1 and Steve are all now members of the Sales Group. So you can see the flexibility of using a query to find objects and then using the pipe symbol commands to push the query as an input string to the DS mod or even the DS move command which we're going to look at next. But first I'm going to go and right click on my testdomain.com and I'm going to select new organizational unit and I'm just going to call this one marketing. And now if we go to our command prompt we'll enter in DS move and we'll move Bill's account from the Microsoft OU across to our new parent which is going to be our marketing OU. So we'll hit enter, and we can see our DS move succeeded. So if we go back to Active Directory Users and Computers and hit refresh, we can see Bill's account has been moved into our marketing OU. Okay, the last DS command we're going to look at is DSRM, and this command is used to remove objects from Active Directory. Now the syntax is similar to the rest of the DS commands, so in our example, we're gonna go and remove Bill's account from our marketing OU. So we'll go back to our command prompt and we'll enter in DSRM with the minus subtree switch, the minus exclude switch, minus C, followed by our marketing OU and our domain component of test domain and domain component of com. Now this minus subtree option basically says include the objects and all objects beneath it for deletion. Now the exclude switch says exclude the current object. Now the minus C switch tells this command to continue even if you happen to get errors. Now if you don't include this minus C parameter, the command will exit immediately after encountering any errors. So if you're working on a lot of deletions here, it will just bomb out if one errors. So include the minus C switch for a bit of sanity. So we'll hit enter and we'll just get a confirmation message asking us, are we sure we want to delete all of the children from our marketing OU? Well, we'll just select yes. 
and we can see that our DSRM succeeded. So we'll go back to Active Directory Users and Computers and hit refresh. We can see that Bill's account has gone. Now we'll go back to our command prompt and this time we'll go and remove the marketing OU entirely as well. Now to remove the marketing OU, we'll just simply go through here and we'll remove this hyphen exclude. So we'll hit enter. We're asked to confirm our decision to delete our marketing OU. We'll say yes and we can see the remove succeeded. So we'll go back to Active Directory Users and Computers, hit refresh and we can see that we're getting an error because we've currently selected our marketing OU and it's not available, there's no such object. So we'll go back to testdomain.com and hit refresh there and you can see our marketing OU has been removed. Now as we wrap up this discussion of the DS commands, a final note, if you do not want a confirmation message asking you, are you sure you wish to do this, type yes or no, then you can actually use the no prompt switch. But a bit of caution though, the DSRM command will just go ahead and remove the object if you use this switch, so be sure this is what you want to do. Okay, so as you can see, there's a lot of power in these command line utilities in the LDEFDE, the CSVDE, and all of these DS utilities. Now I thoroughly recommend you take some time practicing these commands on a test environment. But used properly, these commands will save you a lot of time when it comes to automating your user account creation.